Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So a lot of you asked me about it, and even though I feel like I've been talking about the moon a lot lately, cool stuff just keeps happening there, including the recent landing of the Odysseus lander. And I did actually watch this one live, and this one fell over too, just like Japan. What is the deal with things tipping over on the moon right now? But aside from the falling over part, there were some crazy last minute workarounds that probably saved Odysseus from crashing. So I clearly have no choice. My hands are tied, tied by the busy, busy moon and all of its drama. <laughs> so let's get into it. So on February 22nd, 2024, a US spacecraft named Odysseus set down on the moon's South Pole region. Now it was unmanned, but this is the first US spacecraft to land softly on the moon since Apollo 17 in 1972. It was also the first private spacecraft to land on the moon ever. So that's a lot of firsts. And these pics show the before and after of the landing. There, not there, there, not there, there, not there. Odysseus, nicknamed Odie, is the creation of Intuitive Machines, an American space exploration company headquartered in Houston, Texas. Intuitive Machines holds three NASA contracts under the space agency's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative to deliver payloads to the lunar surface, and Odysseus's flight was part of this initiative. Odysseus was launched on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Kennedy Space Center on February 15, 2024, and it took about a week to get to the moon. And the pre-landing itself had a few issues. It was supposed to enter a circular orbit about 62 miles above the surface, but because of inaccuracies in its trajectory, the spacecraft ended up in an elliptical orbit. Then, to check how close the spacecraft was getting to the moon's surface, the flight controllers turned on the laser range finders. These are instruments that could measure the spacecraft's altitude during landing by firing laser pulses at the moon's surface. But when the controllers checked the data the next morning, just hours before the planned landing, they discovered that one laser had not fired. It was then discovered that the safety switches on the two rangefinder lasers were still enabled when Odysseus went to space. Like a switch that was meant to be unflipped before takeoff was still flipped. And there was no way to flip those switches now. Steve Altimus, the chief executive at Intuitive Machines, said, I can laugh about it now, but Tim was on console as the mission director, and I said, Tim, we're going to have to land without laser range finders. And his face got absolutely white because it was like a punch in the stomach that we were going to lose the mission. They were brainstorming possible workarounds when they realized they had something on board that could help. An experimental instrument called the Navigation Doppler LiDAR, which NASA wanted to test. Essentially, a more sophisticated instrument with three laser beams that measure not just altitude, but the velocity of the spacecraft during its descent. That instrument could provide the missing readings. Tim Crane, the chief technology officer at Intuitive Machine, said, It sounds easy in retrospect. All the engineers had to do was patch the spacecraft software in order for the NASA instrument to provide its readings to the guidance, navigation, and control computer. But he pointed out that in normal software development, this kind of thing would take a month. But their team did it in an hour and a half. But this is one of those things in science where something going wrong ends up being serendipitous. If Odie hadn't arrived in the wrong orbit, the elliptical orbit, the laser altimeter would not have been turned on till an hour before landing. And at that point, it would have been too late to find a solution to the locked range finders. They wouldn't have had that hour and a half to come up with and implement a solution. And Odysseus would have almost certainly crashed. Tim Crane said, we would have probably been five minutes to landing before we would have realized that those lasers weren't working if we had not had that fortuitous event. So serendipity is absolutely the right word. So they had to do a reboot of the onboard computer, but an earlier test simulation had showed that by doing that, the spacecraft would start to drift off course. So controllers had to figure out a way to reboot the computer without dooming the spacecraft, which they did figure out, but it took an extra orbit and another two hour delay. So after all of that, they were ready 
to touch down. But the lander descended faster than anyone expected, and the spacecraft was still moving sideways at two miles per hour, when the motion should have been perfectly vertical. And indeed, it seems like it was still moving slightly sideways when it landed, and one of the six lander legs possibly snagged on the surface. Steve Ultimus said in a press conference that this is most likely the position of poor Odie. Because the spacecraft fell over, the antennas were not pointed directly at Earth, which limited the amount of information that could go back and forth. And for those of you who saw my Japan landing on the moon video, all of this will sound very familiar. Odysseus was carrying a total of 12 payloads, six of them for NASA. This includes the experimental navigation Doppler LiDAR that I mentioned before, as well as the Eagle Cam. This was a student-built camera system that was supposed to deploy during Odysseus's landing and capture photos of it from ground level during its final descent. That didn't happen, however, because of the wonky landing. But Steve Altimus said on February 28th, we reset the visual processing unit and powered up the Eagle Cam and were able to eject it. And we ejected it about four meters away from the vehicle safely. However, either in camera or in the Wi-Fi signal back to the lander, something might not be working correctly. And as of this recording, it does appear that they were not able to get images back from the Eagle Cam, which for the students who built it at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University must have been pretty tough. With another camera still attached to Odysseus, they were able to get a few oddly angled selfies along with some data from the other payloads. However, that data spigot shut off on February 29th when intuitive machines powered down Odie ahead of the long cold lunar night, which lasts about two weeks. Odie's surface mission was just envisioned to last a week or so, so the coming night might therefore kill the lander, cracking its electronics and batteries. But maybe not. Sue Letterer, CLPS project scientist at NASA's Johnson Space Center, said, We've also overcome challenge after challenge after challenge we didn't know that we would be able to, to get past. And he's a scrappy little dude. <laughs> yeah, I would, so not, I would not bet against Odie. I have confidence Odie. in Odie at this yeah. point. That's right. It's been incredible. For NASA, the partial success of Odysseus provided some validation for its strategy of having private companies deliver its instruments. And as we've covered before, the hope is that such companies will be able to launch more quickly at a fraction of the cost. Odysseus might wake up in a few weeks when the sun rises again, or maybe not. Apparently the issue is really the batteries, which really, really do not like freezing cold. And during the lunar night, it does get down to negative 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That is pretty nippy, so I guess we'll see. And you've heard me say it before, coming up with these fixes on the fly when things aren't going our way in order to save a spacecraft from total loss is just as important as having a 100% successful landing in my little old humble Marian opinion. So finding out the details about how they improvised all these little fixes when things were going a bit pear-shaped, I'm just like... And I get it. A lot of people write in my comments, why is it so hard to get to the moon now? We did it a bunch of times in the late 60s and early 70s. Why are we struggling so much? Well, for several reasons. One, all of these new spacecrafts are prototypes. They are not the same spacecrafts that got us to the moon 50 or 60 years ago, not even close. Also, as Nico Detman from ESA points out, there were decades when people were not developing landers. The technology is not that common that you can easily learn from others. During the space race, NASA spent a staggering $25 billion on the Apollo missions, or $257 billion when adjusted for inflation. And it's still clocked up failure after failure after failure before it reached the moon. Remember, it's Apollo 11 that lands man on the moon. We're trying to do it now with Artemis 3. And Artemis is currently set to be costing far less than half of the Apollo missions by 2025. So it's not that our previous experiences are useless, it's just that things are really different now and things get complicated when these missions are separated by decades. But my fingers are still crossed for Odie that he will somehow come back after the lunar night. Seems unlikely, but it would be cool. And speaking of cool, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but NASA recently released this full-fledged trailer announcing that applications are open for the new class of NASA astronauts. And the rules and requirements 
have changed a bit. So you don't necessarily have to be like a fancy test pilot or neurosurgeon or some other fancy profession. Well, you have to be kind of fancy, but only in terms of these basics. Be a US citizen, have a master's degree in a STEM field, have a minimum of three years professional working experience in that field, and be able to pass the flight astronaut physical. That's it. And they even have like a workaround for the master's degree thing. So I will post the trailer and the application over on my Patreon. So head over there if you are morbidly curious. I was watching it thinking, so if I just get a master's degree in biology. But anyway, take a look over there and I will post a video on how the whole application process works. And if any of you are thinking of applying, you have to tell me. You can't watch my channel apply to be an astronaut and then not tell me. It's not allowed. Pretty sure it's a bannable offense. And on that note, <laughs> threatening my subscribers note, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Odysseus, the difficulties of getting back to the moon, or the new requirements to be an astronaut. All will be accepted. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.